Sal Hepetica and Vitalis present Mr. District Attorney, Champion of the People, Defender of Truth, Guardian of our fundamental rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And it shall be my duty as District Attorney not only to prosecute to the limit of the law all persons accused of crime perpetrated within this county, but to defend with equal vigor the rights and privileges of all its citizens. Mr. District Attorney is brought to you in the public interest as part of the constant fight for a better America by Bristol Myers, the makers of Sal Hepatica for the smile of health and Vitalis for well-groomed hair. Sal Hepatica, Vitalis. And tonight, the case of the money machine. Who is it? Let me in, Joyce. I got him with me. It's... Is he all right? He won't... He won't get violent or anything. Of course he's all right. Uh, Sit down, Frank. Take off your coat. Can he understand, Emil? Take off your coat. You hear me, Frank? I understand. I was worried sick. I still am. Worried? You just sit there, Frank. You don't have to talk. Oh, did it go all right? Yeah, yeah, there was nothing to it. I slipped in the back door of the asylum, got him out of his room, and here we are. Didn't take an hour. You sure they won't miss him before morning? Oh, look, Joyce, I told you I used to work in the joint three years ago. I took care of cases like him. Oh, I know, but won't he's, they He's just like a lump of, of putty or something. You set him down and he stays there. <laughs> He doesn't look crazy, I'll say that for him. No, he, he lives in a state, something like that. They got a lot of them like him. Always seem to be seem to be thinking about something a million miles away. Frank? Frank. Now leave him alone. He's all right. Give him a pan of water after a while. We'll keep him in the back room until we hook up with the carney. A pan of water? Like a dog? I don't want him cutting himself on any glass, kid. He's a little money machine. I still wonder if it'll work. No carnival wants a guy working. You ought to be in a hatchery. Well, who's going to know? He'll be a sensation, I tell you. We used to turn him on all the time when I worked the hospital. Turn him on? Yeah, sure. The, the doc explained it one day. He, he's got a mind for figures, see? That's why I thought we'd build the act as a lightning calculator. You like it? Ask him something, Amos. You know, just like you were a square in the crowd. Oh, sure. He likes it. Uh, all right, Frankie. Uh, here's one for you. You ready? <laughs> Look at the way his eyes light up. Go on, ask him. Ask oh, yeah, sure. Uh, multiply, Frank. Three, six, nine, two, one, eight. Got that? Three, six, nine, two, one, eight. Times four, oh, three. Got it? Times four, oh, three. All right, boy. What's the answer? The answer is 148,794,854. Oh, Mr. Gresham is here, Chief. Oh. Well, go right in, please, sir. Well, thank you, Miss Miller. Oh, Mr. Gresham, sit down. Sit down. Uh, this is Mr. Harrington. Hi, Mr. Gresham. Uh, Mr. Harrington. Oh, do you want me, Chief? Uh, yes, stay if you will, please, Miss Miller. Right. Uh, you're with the State Hospital, Mr. Gresham. That's right. Mm-hmm. I know you're familiar with the institution. Yeah, right. that's for the chronic insane, isn't it? We have the heavier load of the state's incurables, yes, Mr. Harrington. Mm-hmm. I've been in charge of protection out there for the last year. Oh, yes, yes, we know. I know you're busy, so I'll make this brief. When the attendants checked roll this morning, we found one of the patients missing. Uh-oh. It's gone, Mr. Gresham. Well, naturally, finding him again is part of my job. Mm-hmm. However, I wanted you to have a full report, too. Yes, yes, we'd like to have. Uh, take this down, will you, Miss Miller? Right, Chief. A man or a woman, Mr. Gresham? A man. His name is Kent. Frank Kent. Mm-hmm. I'm not a doctor, Mr. D.A., but I, I do know his history. Uh, which is what? Well, without using technical terms, Kent is... Uh, well... 
Uh, off in another world is one way to describe it. Mm-hmm. Go on. He's seldom violent. <laughs> in fact, you're seldom aware of him at all. Yes, well, could he become violent, Mr. Gresham? My answer would be yes. Most of them could, if the right things happened. Yes. However, you can get more exact dope from the doctors. Mm. You got a description of him? Oh, I know Frank quite well. <laughs> he has a unique ability, actually... Something I've never run up against before. A unique ability, did you say, Mr. Gresham? That's right. He has a head for figures, mathematics. Hmm? He's amazing, Mr. Harrington. He can add, subtract, and multiply all in his head. And all in a matter of seconds. No matter how complicated the numbers? Well, I've never seen him stumped yet. Yes, there are cases on record like that. Some of them phenomenal. Yeah, how did he uh, escape, Mr. Gresham? Sometime last night, his door was open from the outside. Uh, maybe some other patient. No, Mr. Harrington, that's literally impossible. There are too many doors to get through. And you have no idea where he might be now? I know Frank's habits, Mr. D.A. I think perhaps I can trace him. But where I need your help, though, yes. we want to know who opened that door. Is the lightning calculator ready? Quite ready, Mr. Hudson. All right, folks, give me a number. Any number, just shout it out. You, sir. Beg pardon? All right, now. Five, nine, six. Thank you, sir. Five, nine, six. And you, sir, will you supply the second number? Anything at all, sir? Beg pardon? All right. Times three, eight, four. Got that? We're ready, Mr. Hudson. Times three, eight, four. The answer, please. The answer is 228,864. Thank you, lightning calculator. All right, folks, the show on the inside will begin immediately. Don't miss this amazing demonstration. There's plenty of room on the inside. Follow the metal master into the tent. Thank you, friends. The show is about to begin. Come on, let's go, Harry. Hey, well, who's taking tickets? Oh, where do I get this flap shut? Gee, the tent's filling up. I told you he'd be a sensation, didn't I? Now we can make real plans. Where is he? Oh, he's all right. He's just changing into his costume. He's been doing it all week. Well, get him out and on the platform. If we turn this crowd over fast, we can talk plans before dinner. What do you mean, plans? Well, you think I'm going to waste my time on a carny lot all spring? But you just said... It's like class dates, George. Maybe even a first-rate nightclub. What? Metal acts are big. You know that. I might even teach him some routines. Come on, help me get him going. Well, I still say we ought to stay right... Well, what? Who are you? My name is Gresham. I'm just sitting here in the trailer talking to Frank. Yeah? Well, uh, look, buddy, we don't allow nobody to... Wait a minute. How'd you know his name? Frank, who is this man? I'll handle this, Joyce. Mr. Gresham is my friend. Be quiet, Frank. All right, let's have it. I'm from State Hospital. I've come to take Frank home. In the morning when you awaken with a dull, headachey feeling because you need a laxative, you want relief, fast relief. And you get fast relief when you take gentle, speedy Sal Hepatica. Sal Hepatica, taken before breakfast, brings gentle, speedy relief Usually within an hour. But if it's not until much later in the day that you feel miserable and logy because you need a laxative, well then, too, you want fast relief. And for fast relief, take sparkling sal hepatica one half hour before dinner. Get gentle, speedy relief before bedtime. Yes, for really fast relief, anytime, morning or evening, take sal hepatica and avoid laxative lag. That feeling of discomfort that continues for hours until the ordinary slow-acting laxative brings relief. What's more, because sal hepatica is antacid, it will also sweeten a sour stomach. Anytime you need a laxative, take sal hepatica. 
and get gentle, speedy relief. Morning or night, get feeling right with gentle, speedy Sal Hepatica. We'll just use this desk here in the hospital boardroom, Harrington. Uh, did you bring that diagram, Miss Miller? Yes, sir, right here, Chief. I marked the location of Frank Kent's room uh, right mm, there. Yeah, here we are. Here's the corner right here. Mm-hmm. Now, if you ask me, he went out through here and right in this door here. Yes, and directly to the kitchen. Mm. Yes, from here, it would be easy to get out into the yard. Sure, if you have help. Yes. Yes, I want to go over that with Gresham. Uh, what did his office say, Harrington? Well, I told the guard that we're over here in this wing, Chief. Mm-hmm. He said he'd tell Gresham as soon as he comes in. But he's not here now? No, and he hasn't been since last night. Well, it's my fault, actually. I should have made sure he kept in touch with us. Ah, uh, he'll be back, Chief. In the meantime, we can try to figure out what happened. Yes. Well, it narrows down to this. Kent's been gone over a week. He's ten days now. Mm-hmm. Gresham can't find a trace of him. And there's nothing turned up at missing persons, either. I checked again just before we left to come out here. Mm. Well, all right, let's assume this. If a fellow patient couldn't have released Kent... And that holds because they were all locked up, too. Yes, exactly. Then the next guess is an employee. Chief, you mean one of the nurses or doctors? No, no, not necessarily. It might have been a guard. At least someone who knows these passageways very well. Yeah, and knows where Frank's room was. Yes, that's right. And finally, someone who wanted him out. Well, it couldn't have been a relative. His record doesn't list any. Well, nevertheless, somebody helped him, Miss Miller. Our job is to find out who and why. Don't worry about Frank Gresham. Joyce will bring him right back here to the trailer. As soon as the show is over? I promised you, didn't I? You don't want that audience to riot, do you? Well, all right. Can't be much longer. Well, it sure was a surprise to me, I'll tell you that. Hey, care for a drink? Uh, no, thanks. Uh, what was a surprise? Finding out Frank was in a nut house. I hope you know I wouldn't have had anything to do with him if I'd known. You'll still have to answer some questions. As I explained, there's some doubt about how Frank got out. And you got me. He turned up here in the carny, and I hired him. That's all I know. Mm-hmm. You've always been with the carnival? Yeah, for years. What makes you ask that? When I was standing in the crowd outside, I asked some of the other performers about you. None of them seemed to know much. Oh? You ask at the front office? Not yet. I imagine the district attorney will see to that. The D.A.? I told you his disappearance could have become very serious. Oh, sure. Well, tell me, how did the uh, how did the D.A. find him here? He didn't. I didn't. Oh. Then he don't know you found him yet? Not yet. My job is to see that he gets back. Sure. Well, you can count on me, Gresham. Like I said, he turned up and I hired him. That's about all I know. He looks thinner than when he was at the hospital. Has he been well? You got me. He seemed to want to be alone, so I didn't bother him much. I see. They're taking a long time. The crowds are crazy about him. He'll quit in a minute. Joyce handles the questions for him. (laughs) Amazing. I I, I had a hunch I'd find him in a place like this. That's why I looked in that magazine. Billboard? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, you tell me. You know, it's hard for me to believe. What is? Well, that he could... Well, have a couple of screws missing. He's such a simple guy. His mind isn't. He's sure nuts about figures. You, uh, sure you won't have a drink? No, not now. Just cheap whiskey. I don't usually go for drinking myself. Take a bottle like this. <laughs> Simple-minded jerk. How do you like it now, huh? Come on, you lousing up the chair. Come on, Frank. we got to take it. Hey, don't just stand there. Help me do something with him. That's my friend. You keep out of this, Frank. Joyce, lock the door. What did you do to him? I hit him with the bottle. Now, will you lock the door? Mr. Gresham is my friend. I think if I'm Shut hungry, up. You'll... I don't want to hear another word out of you. Joyce. I'm locking it. All right, all right. Now put Frank in his closet. What? 
You heard me. Put him in and lock it. Go on. Not now. I want to stay with my friend. Go with Joyce, Frank. Go on. Come on, Frank. In here. Please? Hey, Mo, I can't Frank, please. Frank, get in there. You want a belt in the teeth? No. In here, please. That's right. And don't make any noise. Any more orders, mastermind? Now, don't get smart. Smart? When you just hit him over the head? You think I'm going to let him take Frank back after all my work? He'll only find you again, Amo. I told you this was no good. Oh, look, this creep was on his own. All I got to do is change my name. And Frank's, too. What happens when he comes to? You going to keep hitting him the rest of his life? I don't have to. Why not? Do you think he'll ever come or... What do you mean? The rest of his life is over, kid. He's dead. I'm sorry, Harrington. I I was so shocked when you told me it was Roy Gresham, I I didn't get all the facts. You know how you feel, Chief? I couldn't believe it either. Uh, Harrington, you said he died from a blow on the head? Yeah, yeah. Doc Hogan's got him downstairs in the morgue now. Uh -huh. Where was his body discovered? In a boxcar. What? Yeah, in a boxcar on the railroad side, Miss Miller. Switch out about ten miles out of town. His death occurred there? No, I doubt it, Chief. There weren't any signs of fight or anything. It's, it's more like somebody killed him and then threw him in the empty car. Yes, well, we'll know more when Dr. Colgan's through. Uh, how about his effects? Everything was on him. Keys, identification, billfold. Uh, how much money? About $40. Stuff's all coming up in an envelope. Jewelry? Yeah, watch, ring, the usual. I see. Now, well, robbery is pretty well ruled out, then. I think so. Yes. Get the state hospital on the phone, William Smith. Oh, sure, right away, Chief. I asked Gresham if Frank Kemp could turn violent. And he said if the right things happened. Yes. I wonder if they did. She even got him into his tuxedo yet? He goes on in another hour. Hey, Mo, I'm scared. You what? All right, shut the door. The door. Never mind, Frank. I wasn't talking to you. I said shut the door. Yes, sir. Now, there's nothing to be scared about, Joyce. You saw the papers this morning. They barely mentioned that bum from the hospital. I mean here. This isn't a carny anymore, Amo. This is a nightclub. Hey, you're telling me. Forty bucks a night. The police will be looking for Frank. Don't you see that? More than ever now. So what? So what? When they find Frank, they'll know about that... that man. Ah, you think I'm a dope? You think I ain't got that squared away? Joyce, shut up. Look, kid, who was looking for Frank? Gresham, wasn't it? Mr. Gresham. Shut up or I'll throw you in the closet. What if they do find him? But who who will they think they... killed him? Me or a nut who escaped? You mean you're going to tell them Frank killed him? Mr. Gresham... I'm telling nobody nothing. Chances are it'll be a long time before they find us. But if they do, what then? They'll assume Frank conked them. It's natural. Mr. Gresham is dead. We know that, Frank. You're my money machine, kid. And I'm keeping you turned on full. Listen now to some good grooming advice. Every Jane and Judy and Alice goes for guys who use Vitalis. They have handsome, healthy-looking hair when they give it live action care. So be one of those well-groomed guys. Well-groomed and Vitalis-wise for live action care of your scalp and your hair. Get Vitalis. Do more than just keep your hair well-groomed. Keep it neater in a natural, healthy-looking way with live-action Vitalis Care. Vitalis and the 60-second workout wakes up your scalp. You actually feel the tingling difference, and she'll see the difference in your hair. Yes, be one of those well-groomed guys. 
Well-groomed and vitalist wise For live action care of your scalp and your hair Get vitalist Yes, get vitalist When the doctor out of the hospital calls, let me know, Miss Miller. All right, I will, Chief. I've asked for a full report on Kent's condition. Uh Uh-huh. At least if we understand his illness, we'll know what to expect. And where to find him. Yes, I'll get that. Oh, all right. Maybe the doctor. Yes. Chief? Harrington. I got news. Where are you? About two miles from that railroad site. Oh, where Gresham's body was found? That's right. I found a carnival playing a field out there. A carnival? Yeah, yeah, Chief. This falls right into our lap. Remember that half a ticket stub we found on Gresham? Yes, yes. Did you trace it? Yeah, sure, through the printer. Gresham got it when he paid admission to this carny last night. A carnival. Of course, of course. Oh, well, sure, you can just about guess the rest. Yeah. Frank Kent was in the sideshow here until this morning. Yes, who with? Oh, a guy named Emil Hudson. Oh, and a dame. Emil Hudson. Yes, yes, it means plenty, Harrington. His name is on the personnel records of the hospital. Huh? Yes, he used to work there. Oh, brother, this is really narrowing down. Well, all right, let's finish it then. Uh, can you get a lead on where they are now? Uh, well, well, see, we're, we're stymied there. Yes? Looks to me like the three of them pulled out for good. <laughs> Joyce. Sit still, Frank. I'll fix your tie. Mr. Gresham... Don't keep mentioning him, Frank. He's my friend. Yeah, yeah, I know. Mother, I want to introduce my friend. What? He wants me to walk to school with him, Mother. May I? What are you talking about? If I walk with my friend, they can't laugh at me. Not if I'm with him. Sure. <laughs> sure. Now, hold still. You go on in half an hour. Don't laugh at my friend, Mother. Please don't. There. Now you look okay. Mother? Look. Now snap out of it, will you? You're laughing, Mother. Don't. What? Stop, I said. Frank, let go of me. Frank, Stop no. Stop it. Stop Frank, it. Frank, help! 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 Don't laugh. Get him all excited for. Are you nuts? He's trying to kill me. Relax, I said. Relax. Don't hurt me, Mother. Don't. Wait a minute. Slam the door, Joyce. You want the manager to come in here? I want to get out of here. You stay where you are. Now listen to me, Frank. We go on in a minute. And you're going to do a show. Mother. Now think, Frank. Think? Numbers. Nothing but numbers. Eight times eight. I... I, Tell me. Eight times eight. Tell me. The answer is 64. All right. Eight, nine, six, five, times four, six, nine... I'll call back. Yes, thank you. The yes, that's right. Yes, I have that. Yes. That's right. Yes, thank you. No, that's all we need. Right? Chief, nothing so far. Me neither. No, that's all right. We're finished. Finished? What? Yes, almost finished, Harrington. Get your things, Miss Miller. You too, Harrington. You but... got what we want, Chief. Oh, I'm sure of it. Now let's go. Quite a change for me, Harrington. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't get to nightclubs very often. No, me neither, Chief. Not even on a visit like this. Oh, Chief, he's coming out on the floor. Oh, yes, I see. Now All right, Harrington. You better take your station over by the wall. Right. Oh, see you in a minute. Does someone over there have a problem? This gentleman has a problem. May I have the numbers, please? Are you ready, calculator? Ready? Six, seven, nine, six. 
Repeat that, please. Six, seven, nine, six. Multiply by seven, eight, nine. Times seven, eight, nine. The answer, please. The answer is five million three hundred and sixty-two thousand and forty-four. I thank you. May we have another question, please? You, sir? Yes, I have a question. Go right ahead, sir. The human calculator never fails. Uh, may we have it quiet, please? Go ahead, sir. My question is, who killed Roy Gresham? Mr. Gresham is my friend. Wait a minute. Who killed him, Frank? Tell me quickly. They put sister on right behind him. Frank? Amo killed him. Amo hit him. Shut up. All right, boy, just stand where you are. All right, just stay at your tables, ladies and gentlemen. This is all part of the show. Uh, Brophy is at the door, Miss Miller. See that he takes charge of Frank. He's all right, Chief. He isn't moving Um, out of his chair. Let go of me, you clown. What are you trying to do? Amo, I can stop. All right, take them out the side, Harrington. Come on, both of you. This show is over. There's one good thing, Chief. Yes. Frank is back in the hospital. He certainly is, and under good care once again, Miss Miller. Yeah, so are Joyce and Emil. Under our care, real special. Yes, Joyce didn't stand up very well under questioning, did she, Harrington? No, I'll say she didn't. She even handed us the bottle Emil used to kill Gresham. Complete with fingerprints. Well, Chief, actually, you didn't need Frank's statement at all, did you? No, Miss Miller, but it helped to unnerve both. Joyce and Emil. That, and it gave them no chance to get together on their stories. And that's why she broke down so readily. Oh, it was a cinch. After that ticket stub led us to the Kearney, all we had to do was phone nightclubs until we found one that had just booked a mental act. Yes, Emil boasted that he'd put Frank into a nightclub, Harrington, and some of the carnival people were only too glad to give us that suggestion. Yes, some suggestion. We find them waiting for us. Well... Frank sure got a mind, all right. I'm glad he's got a good care now and in a place where he belongs. Ladies and gentlemen, we are happy tonight to join the San Francisco Junior Chamber of Commerce and station KNBC in naming our first honorary Mr. District Attorney. He is 15-year-old Alvin Julian of Sequoia High School in Redwood City, California. Alvin, at great personal risk, lowered himself into a narrow drain pipe to rescue a 13-month-old baby that had fallen 10 feet into the pit. Our first honorary Mr. District Attorney, Alvin Julian. Information on how you can become an honorary Mr. District Attorney can be supplied by the station to which you are listening. You know, ladies and gentlemen, in each of us somewhere there exists fear. A clever criminal realizes this, and often he can twist that fear into tragedy. We encounter such a man in next week's highly dramatic case of Scared to Death, and I urge you to join us for it. Until then, thank you... And good night. The next time you have a headache, take bufferin because bufferin acts twice as fast as aspirin. Here's why. You see, no tablet, no powder can relieve pain until the pain-relieving ingredient enters your bloodstream. Bufferin, with its exclusive formula, gets into your bloodstream twice as fast as aspirin. That's why it acts twice as fast as aspirin to relieve pain. So for fast pain relief from headaches, neuritis, neuralgia, get Bufferin at drug counters everywhere. B-U-F-F-E-R-I-N. Bufferin. The names of all characters in the ninth dramatization are fictitious and any resemblance to names of living persons or actual places is purely coincidental. Our stars were Jay Justin in the title role, Len Doyle as Harrington and Vicki Vola as Miss Miller, with music by Charles Paul. The program was produced and directed by Edward A. Byron and written by Robert J. Shaw. Mr. District Attorney was originated by Phillips H. Lord. And remember, Sal Hepatica for the smile of health 
Vitalis for well-groomed hair. Sal Hepatica, Vitalis. Fred Utell speaking for Bristol Myers, who invites you to tune in again next week for Mr. District Attorney. <laughs>